This is a demo of Mango's 3D regions of interest. Uh, we can create up to eight per image, and each is designated by a different color. You select the color you want to use. We'll start with red. The simpler region of interest are found at this menu item. We can insert a cube of certain width at the crosshair, or we can insert a sphere of the same of a certain radius, and we'll start with a sphere. You select a region of interest by double clicking inside it, double clicking outside, deselects it. You can also use shift and drag to select a region of interest, very much like other graphics programs. You can move the region of interest around in 3D, but more importantly, we can get statistics about the region of interest of varying shapes. This is a small shaped region of interest, and as we move it around, we can measure average values, standard deviations, centroid locations, etc. As I move the region of interest, notice there's a little red dot up behind. That's a centroid because it can't be calculated until we decide what the destination location is. So we can also change the view and move it in different views. So Mango's region of interest can be uh, edited and and moved in any of the views. So let's move him up here. Um, another thing, notice that there are handles around this region of interest and as you move near a handle you get little arrows that indicate what you can do. So we can squish him a bit here and if we go to one of the other views back here we can change the shape here as well. So you have pretty good uh, tools for adjusting the region of interest. If you needed it much smaller, I would just start with a small one and, and use the spherical one. Um, so this is a fairly nice way to go and make measurements throughout the, the 3D volume of different tissues if that's what you choose to do. So let me turn off the shape stats and remove this small region of interest and let's look at some of the uh, richer ways of getting at 3D regions of interest. Common approach is to, is to use a threshold. Here we'll use a threshold of 25% of the max. And we generate a reasonable looking region of interest around here. But we have all these little excluded places, including the lateral ventricles. Uh, so if that's what you choose to do, that's fine, but quite often we want to keep those features in, as part of the brain region of interest. So let's use a slightly different approach. We'll use shrink wrap and we'll go to the 25% max and see what we get. So now we've excluded some of these things that on the interior because we uh, the shrink wrap wouldn't go inside yet, but we do need a, a slightly different threshold to exclude some of the superficial features. And we can do this by selecting the region of interest, this region of interest, and now if you look inside there are many things that you can do. We can reflect it about horizontal and vertical, uh, which is good if you wanted to make a hemisphere measure and swap it back and forth. In this case, we're going to shrink wrap inside the shrink wrap and we'll move up to 30% of max and see what that does. So now we're following in the CSF and mostly this is CSF that's connected to the external surface, uh, not the deeper CSF. And this is more of the region of interest you'd like to have for making measurements of volumes. So I'm going to build another uh, region of interest region of interest uh, off of this one and I'm going to designate it a different color. And this time we're going to make it a convex hull which is the convex wrapping around uh, the red region of interest. And he'll come up here shortly. There we go. And let me select both of these. So this selected everything. Presently it appears to be green in, the, in all of our views. That's because we've made green to be the uh, top color. Now red's the top color. So 
let's take a look at uh, what we need to do in making measurements with these images. So this, this is the statistics for the entire volume. This is basically the size of the volume, but we can also, now that we have regions, get statistics within each of the regions. So this is the volume of the brain, uh, including all of those interior things, but excluding mostly the superficial CSF. And this is the volume of the convex hull. So there's some gyrification studies that relate the convex hull size and surface area to uh, the brain size and surface areas. But this is a start looking at it at, by volume. Now the volume is measured in this case in cubic millimeters. The basic unit of measure in mango is generally millimeters. And so that's what we show as the basic unit. If the region you were using were a line, this would be in millimeters. If the region you were using were area only, this would be an area units. Uh, if you click it, if there's a little arrow, that means you there's some other options here. So we can switch between voxels and actual size in cubic millimeters. Next to that are locations, and these are locations for, in this case, the centroid, the maximum, and the minimum. And notice the minimum in the whole entire image, this is the first occurrence in which it saw zero, which is the very first voxel it encountered. Um, and then the first zero here is in these various regions of interest. Probably the most interesting thing uh, to use here is the centroid, or the max. Um, in the centroid, it pretty much the same location. This is a weighted value location, uh, slightly different due to the fact that we have different portions of the image included in the weighting, but they're very close. In fact, if you click on it, the cursor goes to the location indicated here at the centroid, and it basically goes to the same location in all three cases. We also uh, provide a means for giving you the mean value standard deviation and sum so all of this information, uh, though nice here, you generally want to have it in a spreadsheet. So we've created a way to export this to a spreadsheet. Here we'll do it to the desktop. It's a stats file. If you click it, it opens nicely in the spreadsheet. And you can quickly reformat that. So you can see all the data. And you'll notice that the numeric precision is fairly high in Mango. We work in floating point internally. And if I click over here on these numbers, you can see how big the numbers really are. So this demonstrates the some of the features, 3D features used in Mango uh, for creating regions of interest.